here for game number one in the grand finals, but we were pretty skeptical going in, and I think we're still skeptical coming out of it, Gilly. Yeah, uh, her ability to keep people alive versus that kind of poke in the end was a difficulty, a huge difficulty for the team. Yes, she had peekaboo, she still had a cleanse too, yeah. uh, so she was giving vision to the team. She has a lot of utility, a lot of damage mitigation, but the problem is when you have uh, your main warrior being somebody like Tyrael, who is less tanky overall, he gives some shielding to the team, yes, but overall they're, they, they had trouble with that kind of poke. And the thing to note is we used to see Brightwing picked with Tyrael to be the cross-supporting of Tyrael, can make up for the weaknesses of Brightwing. Yeah. Material has only been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed, not only in his ability to help his teammates, but also to sustain his own health into the front line. Right. So that strategy has only been dropped harshly in power since the last latest patches. Our map next is going to be Cursed Hollow here as Dignitas has tied it up. So effectively brought themselves back on even standing here with Team Fnatic. And it being Cursed Hollow, technically Tyrael can still be a thing there. Maybe played a little bit differently because of the map and how it's going to play out. But does Stitch just come in here for game number two? I think that depends if Dignitas once again can control the Anubarak. I think they'll yeah, take the opportunity. Yeah. But then if Fnatic change things up and want to get make sure that they can get Anubarak for Breeze this time, that would be when we see the fallback of Stitches. But another thing to consider is, again, Abathur, Dahaka, these globals for this battleground. Fnatic banning Abathur out. All right, time to get into game number two here as it's 1-1. Fnatic coming into this best of seven with a 1-0 lead. Draft number two as we go into Cursed Hollow. Yeah, and Fnatic right away banning out the Abathur is something we've mentioned many times before, where Abathur is more of a second pick ban, so they want something else for the first pick. Maybe the Anubrak, maybe something else. We'll have to see what they want there. With the Abathur gone, Dahaka has now got to be concerned onto this map. I'm wondering, Dig could make a risky play in this draft through this ban, and actually, I know this sounds weird, ban out the Stitches. Uh, that forces Fnatic to go, well, do you want that to Haka like that high a priority? You can then move into the Anubarak and Uther rotation later on if, they, if you can bait them into it. It depends right. on how valuable is that global ban on the side of Fnatic, and Dignitas is going to forfeit over the Dahaka, or at least a global pressure if Fnatic wanted to first pick it. The thing is, is that as the as the tournament has gone on and we've watched Dignitas in a particular develop, it feels like even on this map, even if they do give the Dahaka over, that would have been a Zelia. And then by proxy, you could say that the Illidan is the next thing that might happen if they don't want to go down that double warrior route. And the hunt has been really strong for Zelia. He's looked great on that Illidan. Yeah, I mean, the execution of the hunt plays for Team Dignitas has been some of the best in this tournament. And the, part of the reason why they're here in the grand finals is yeah, just yeah. because Zelia is not all inning onto the improper targets. They're staggering initiations, baiting cooldowns in specific directions, and then cycling focus targets. Is, uh, almost flawlessly. Yeah, his hunts have been absolute perfection, like against Genji after Deflect is down. Mm. But because his timings are so good, it also ensures that he has some of the highest siege damage, being able to continue to globally soak just like we've seen him do on Dahaka. So it is a concern definitely for Fnatic. That team Dignitas might go into that Illidan once again. I think they're undefeated with their Illidan so far in this tournament. Big statement. That would be very scary. I mean, I think they take Uther for sure if you're Dignitas. The real question is what else do you take with it? And they're thinking about it as well here. Gray main. Not the hero I would have guessed for Dig in that high of a rotation. But removing it from, I mean, it's not a bad pick by any means. It's just, you know, it would, denying it from Fnatic is also something to consider again because the play that they've had has been so phenomenal. Yep, I do like the Grey Mane there. I think if they want a hero there, it's either the Grey Mane or the Li Ming. I, as far as the Dahaka goes, I do think it is a good hero, but we've, once again, like like we've been saying, we've seen Zelia play the Illidan, and after level 10, you yeah. can hunt in to kind of match the Dahaka. It's a little bit harder before then, but it's something that they can do, so. I like the first two picks by Dignitas here. If Dignitas ended up banning Falstad, where does Quacknix then go? <clears throat> With the Grey Mane removed and Genji already gone. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. Quacknix historically, uh, you know, before the rise of Fnatic was kind of criticized. Well, <laughs> oh, never there mind. we go. <laughs> we answered that question fast, boys. They I did not want to worry about it. 
liking the Stitch's second pick here. This is exactly what they did to E-Star as well. I believe it was a Nubrak main tank. Wubby on the off tank Stitches. They had the Falstad with the Gust. They had the Brightwing with the Emerald Wind in that particular yeah, game true. as well. So this is kind of a repeat and at the same time, they're finally doing it, getting rid of both the Nubrak and Stitches against Dignitas, which and, I like a lot. And a history lesson for anybody, uh, Wubby used to be the Stitches on Team Dignitas almost a year and a bit ago, so. To answer your question about Greymane, I think for here, it's a little bit Hero Pools, a little bit what Team Dignitas deems to be a stable pick for them. Uh, already, Abathur was banned. When you're looking at Snitch, he plays uh, a few heroes a lot. He does have a lot, a large hero pool that he will rotate between, but he has a few that are all the way up at the top that he enjoys, and Greymane is another one of those. Greymane's also a pick that could flex in between both Mene and Snitch, so in that regard, it's also allowing them to be a bit flexible. But also, Team Dignitas just generally trends to have the same heroes that they pick at the first half. You were the one telling me that one, Dreadnought. Yeah, uh, in the top half of the draft, I mean, Dignitas is one of the more rigid teams uh, historically. Mm. They, they are some of the most predictable, which kind of leads to them having a larger sample size on those heroes. The Medivh. Ooh. That was... You see, that's... Again, not what I expected here. That's actually happened a few times this tournament against Team Dignitas. The Medivh yeah. ban has come in, and we've not yet seen them play all tournament. But That I one's just the teams knowing each other. Yes, it, it, it definitely is. I mean, if Fnatic is going with their isolation strategy again, Medivh's got to be one of the best heroes to counter that. So I would expect Fnatic to pick up the Brightwing here. Their, their last hero last time was a Genji. They're not going to be able to get that mm -hmm. again. But um, letting the Illidan through, I don't remember exactly what E-Star was running, but it was something like Grammy and Illidan. It was a very E-Star-esque composition. So. I really want Team Dignitas to focus on uh, Tyrael in this rotation and just hard initiation with the Malfurion ban yeah. out, focusing on the Uther, putting a lot of people on the side of Fnatic, specifically the false that is vulnerable to that kind of initiation. There's the Illidan. I think it's going to be last pick Tyrael, and I would like to see just all in dive onto whatever target of Fnatic is vulnerable. Yeah. It's going to have to be hard initiation if we do see that kind of divide and conquer a strategy come I, out. I like it also into the stitches, just because not only in the mobility of Tyrael and being able to wear a lot of the hooks, but also one of the biggest complaints we've had against stitches is the lack of initiation into the 16 True. second window of no hook. And Judgment essentially makes that, uh, you cannot deny it unless you stop time with Void Prison or something of the like. Yeah, that would be the optimal way for Dignitas to play if one of them does get hooked, or even if not. I wonder what Fnatic is going to get for their last pick. The last time they had the X-Strike Illidan for the burst damage, they definitely want something that has decent burst damage, but they're going to have to go for a plan B on that pick. So wonder what they think is the next optimal pick. And there's I the wondered if they were going to do that again. All right. Oh, Vala. I wondered if maybe Shwimpy would play Kill Thaw, follow-up damage, or follow-up stuns for the hooks, but getting Vala instead. Yeah, so whilst in the first game we had our uh, apprehensions about Brightwing, this game we know exactly why it's happening, correct? It's a lot better yeah. than the last game. It's it's I, Though I was like, well, I give up on you because of the Brightwing pick in the last game. This one, I'm like, I totally understand it. It makes yeah. a lot of sense for Fnatic to move into it. But again, it does have its downsides. It's not as drastic, but it does have downsides. Is it the Tyrael? I can't see it being anything else. I, I can, but I just don't feel like it fits the composition very well. Even if they don't want to go to Judgment into full dive, they can still play Sanctification safe play with their melee composition. Is a solo warrior not necessarily stand out, but I feel like it's... Dignitas is a good enough team, effective enough here in this game that I would like to see him move in that direction, especially with the Brightwing locked in. What about JPL's Muradin, just as a different option? You could. Uh, that would be probably, the, I, in my opinion, the backup. There it is. Okay. We haven't really seen that much this tournament, to be honest. Just a few times, but he does a surprising amount of hero damage whenever he plays him. And <laughs> his time spent alive already is going to be quite high because it's Muradin. But then compared to other Muradin players at the mid-season brawl, is high upon that too. So it's a safe pick for them. Yep. He has some stuns as well. Uh, it's, just, it's a comfort hero that's sort of in the back. It's not going to be a priority, but when it happens that JPL gets choked out of a noob and stitches. So the big question is, is that can Dignitas House deal with this division composition that we've seen come out from Fnatic? 
with what they have. They can, but I think a lot of that goes on to Zelia on the own and the right. side suck, the pressure and cycling through the map, the early game pressure they can get up against Fnatic. Fnatic is, uh, we, we know what their draft is. It's all about the picks. It's all about the isolation. I, it, it's always possible for them to win. That's one of the cool things about that style of composition. It's just whether or not Dignitas allows the circumstances yeah. for that to happen. It's interesting that Daka didn't come in because it just purely doesn't fit these compositions considering yeah. that they're going to be wanting to team fight. Now it's time for predictions, Gilly, going into our second game. I'm still not going to vote against the Bright Wing. I saw Fnatic execute <laughs> this kind of style before and it was devastating for their opponents, so Fnatic again. Okay. I'm not sold on the Murden. And I do think that Fnatic is more comfortable with this style of strategy. I think there's a lot too much pressure on Zaley's shoulders in this game to carry it. So I'm got to go with Fnatic. And Fan? Yeah, last time I voted against them, I thought it was too hard to execute. But it turns out it's not that hard. And also, they executed beyond my beliefs. So Fnatic. Mm. A full Fnatic sweep here at the desk. Let's see what Chaff thinks going into game number two as Dinatas has taken quite the swing here in the predictions from everybody around the world. Time now to go into our second game here in the Grand Finals. It's a 1-1 after Fnatic got that freebie going into this best of seven. Let's head over to the Caster's team for Cursed Hollow. Can Zillia's Illidan continue to reign supreme in this tournament, or will Fnatic shut him down? I am excited for this one. Fnatic was confident in the draft. They let the Illidan go through, and now they have to prove that they have what it takes to get their victory. And it's going to be a rough one. It's going to be a rough one, but let's get it started here. On the left side, in the blue, Breeze on a Anubarak, Watnix on Falstad, Wubby on Stitches, Smexy on Brightwing, Swimpy on Vala. Here is Fnatic. And to the right side, their opponent, we have in a red, Bakery on the Utah, Snitch on Greymane, Mina on Liming, Zelia on Illidan, JPL on Marin. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Team Dignitas. Murden moving into the block, and it is a joy to see JPL play in the Murden. One of the most effective gankers I've seen on a Murden. Not minding jumping in the towers to jump on members that might be slightly overextended in his eyes. They have proven one thing, and that is that they are aggressive. And Murden, he can go in with the rest of the team. He can go in with the Illidan. But of course, the alternative was Tyrael, and they let Tyrael go. A hero that has great control over the boss fights, can zone perfectly after 16 with the Holy Ground. They felt absolutely confident that Muradin was the better pick here. And I feel one of the reasons why that is, is that Muradin has a good chance of surviving if he gets the hook and is isolated. He can survive, but he can also bring the Stormbolt in, which is very important here. Dignitas always sets up after JPL lands some kind of CC. Now, can he land it here? against Fnatic. They have a pretty mobile comp. Look at this Volus. She can maneuver pretty well. With Smexy to back him up, they could be in a great spot to handle that pressure. Heavy pressure, by the way, also on the lanes now. Down to the bot lane, we have currently Quatnix and Wubi on their false dead stitches comp, trying to get the first tower. But up to the top lane, Dignitas with equal pressure. Equal pressure here, and I am wondering, maybe, we can see Stitches move into that flea bag. We've seen it before from Wubby. He <laughs> loves getting stunned and bringing out those hooks. Look what Dignitas is doing. They're keeping one of the stuns hidden in the Fog of War in the brush because the idea is wait until Shrimpy or Smexy moves out and then immediately start with a Stormbolt. Mena, he is absolutely perfect on Liming, one of the best, if not the best, Liming player that we have in Europe. And he will be there with a combo. You get the second stun and that's the kill. So far, Fnatic has played it very safe and they are rewarded. They are getting structures down at the bot lane. Yeah, exactly. That's the point there. Dingtoss is able to siege away because of that fear of being caught out. So Fnatic will have to deal with that at some point. But if we're starting to hit that two-minute mark where giant pressure is important, Grayman already in the bottom right set up to do so. Dignitas just on point in terms of their timings. The question always is, where is that tribute going to be? The RNG gods will smile on one of the teams, but only one. And whoever has the tribute on its side will get a bit more value out of those Siege Giants. And we have an advantage currently for Dignitas here. The tribute spawns to the top lane, so Fnatic has to really think about how they're going to approach this. Do they go in with a five-man? Do they leave Stitches at the bot lane? And currently it seems as if it's going to be a 
here. Four versus five in favor of Dignitas. Yes, yeah, so they're moving in aggressively with Wubby still in the bottom. Hungering arrow build here for Bala as well. So that'll help out for the poke in delaying that tribute grab. We'll see if they can land it here. Here comes an engage as JPL jumps in. Yeah, and Anubarak has to move out here. The tribute on the side of Dignitas as Bakery gets the channel through. Stitches had to stay bot lane and he did. And you've been talking about Vala. You've been talking about the arrow build. Let's look at Falstead for a moment. He's the second damage dealer here in the lineup of Fnatic. And we have seen Gathering Storm a lot, actually, in this tournament. But right now, it is once again the auto attack focus. And talking auto attacks, we're seeing a lot of them going down on Bakery, who's the first death in this game. He will fall there, and that will be a kill for Fnatic. And continuing your point there with the Hungering Arrow. It's a great mage build because it comes online faster than the Falstead build. Gathering Storm takes a while to set up. And then at some point, you do have an automatic power spike for Falstead when you hit that 13 with the marksman. Once again, aggression from Fnatic. They're looking for another kill, but Murden hops out of there. He uses his escape. We have also, of course, with the stacking process now, False Dead with Season Marksman will just increase the damage later on. And Muradin, after 13, he is going to feel that pressure. When we have Giant Killer with mm -hmm. Season Marksman, then Muradin is going to have a rough time up at that front line. And that is what Quartnix is thinking about. The hook! Wobby land the hook. Here comes the stun. They're focusing Snitch <gasps> down. Snitch will fall. Snitch is down, and that's the kill. The Brightwing in a bit of trouble, but not enough. And that is Fnatic with a second kill here. JPL jumping out, but Fnatic really bringing the aggression right now. And Wubi following up with a second kill right away. Well, I'll be excited to show off his stitches here. We've seen it twice in the HEC regular season, and boy, was it a fantastic day. Fnatic right now is basically saying, JPL, you say you can play stitches? Wait until <laughs> you see Wubi. The gauntlet has been thrown down between our two teams, and I am just loving it. It's all about mercenary pressure right now, as we're going to have Ding grouping in the top right. And this is the part where you're going to start seeing Illidan peel off and be aggressive in certain lanes or towards mercenaries. For now, Illidan is in the top. He's moving in for that fort that was broken down earlier by Dignitas. And keep in mind that we see Dignitas really come online in the late game, in a lot of these games. And late game pressure, late game team fights, this is where they excel. At this point, they're still trying to get isolation kills, but Quartnix is able to move out here. And by the way, Shrimpy is constantly trying, of course, to also stack his own talent. He's currently at 15 additional damage, so not quite a lot. But once we're seeing the next tribute spawn and the 5 versus 5, he should be able to get a few more in, especially now that the teams have repeating arrow with a level 7. Dignitas moves in. They're looking for it, and they get the kill on Vala. Shrimpy will fall. They pull back immediately. Remember, all five members were here for Dignitas. They converged looking for those kills. Yeah, they really went in with the five man there, and I don't think that Shrimpy expected this much pressure. We have still the soak up to the top lane, thanks to Brightwing. Once again, they're attempting to isolate Breeze. The attribute has spawned. Breeze burrows out, and we have by now also Vala back. But still the soak and an easy second tribute for Team Dignitas. I really like this pressure that we're seeing from Dignitas. Falstead doesn't really do too well in this engagement with an Illidan and a Greymane and Muradin on this front line pushing in. So they get the turrets relatively easy after they kill off Vala. I like that heads up play. I also want to note something that we have seen not really in a while. If you look at Anubarak, we have seen a huge focus of Anubarak players trying to simply dive the back line and go for the Under King on level 4. A few weeks back, we saw mostly bed of barbs, and this is something that Fnatic uses again. It's an absolute fantastic tool if you want to slow your opponent down, if you want to zone the enemy, or if you just simply try to delay someone who is isolated by that combo that we're probably going to see. Yes, there it is, with the Gorge and with the Look. Gust. Gorge and Brightwing. Here we go. Polymorph underneath the fort. Murden being focused down. Can JPL get out? Stop. The Emerald win into the follow up, and Breeze will secure the kill. They get the kill against Murden. This is exactly what they wanted just now. Dignitas with the level 10. It's unlikely that even with a 10, Murden would have been able to get his avatar through because the, the stuns were chained really well on the side of Fnatic, but that was a good kill for them and gives them a bit momentum. But now we have online what Dignitas has been waiting for the entire time. Their hunt for the side soak, trying to make these plays happen. Let's not forget, with level 10, this Integrate against Cocoon is an amazing tool. That it is. Fnatic looks pretty poised here to grab this tribute, though. They are setting up on the right side. Breeze, in particular, watching out for the flanks. JPL finally joining in on the fight. Can they stop Wubby? The hunt goes off. He will delay. He goes in there, trying to go straight for the target here, but the rest of Fnatic is starting to show up. Krocknix a little bit isolated here as we have JPL going in with the Avatar. Billy on the top left, looking at Wubby, bringing out the damage. Curse Bullet does connect. JPL jumps out. There's the Storm Bolt. Here's the cleanse. Oh, the Gust saving Wubby for now, but here we go. 
go, they get the kill. Dignitas is losing Illidan. Illidan done goof there and more possibly in trouble. Cocoon coming out, Snitch on the left side. Mane going for this the channel. Can they that hold curse. it? They're gonna, no, the Divine Shield oh, comes oh, out. And oh. Yes, they're gonna get the tribute here. Dignitas is able to get the curse, but can they get away with their lives? This does not look for Dignitas. This is turning to be a disaster for them. If they lose now also, JPL, he's low on mana. He's trying to escape. They have the vision. This is staggered deaths that we're seeing now. JPL locked on the side. Schwimpy coming in, and he's looking to secure it. He gets a hop. He jumps over, but Smexy oh was waiting God. for him. Hello. Gonna go for the damage. JPL <laughs> falls. The hunt, though. Here comes Illidan. Oh, no. Oh Smexy falls. God. Smexy falls, but the Smex God took out a target. The problem is Stitches is also dying. Falstead didn't even care the entire time. He said, guys, what are we doing? We need to go and defend the bot lane. And he does, but Breeze is dying as well. Dignitas, they lost three heroes as they channeled the curse, but all of a sudden they turn it around. Dignitas, the Kryptonite to fall. Our Fnatic is moving in, getting the damage here and breaking open a keep wall here. A eight minutes and a 30 seconds. Starting to put damage on the keep as well. 10 more seconds until a new Brack is on the field, but Dignitas, thinking they've got enough, is going to pull back. 13 is online faster for Dignitas. They're here with the extra talent. The curse nearly over though. There we go. And the keep is still alive. At this point, Fnatic is looking for their next talent and they still want these isolations. It started well for them, but they gotta be too greedy over the curse fight. Fnatic thinking that their opponents went over to the boss in the top right will start their own on the bottom of left and they'll start burning it down. Dignitas themselves will finally start their own in the top right as well. So it's going to be a boss trade. This does favor Fnatic because they're trying to get towards that 13. At this point, Fnatic is going down at the bot lane through a fort, of course, as well. But their 13 is the most important thing. That's where Quatnix comes into play now with that side soak, and he gets it. The talent is there. Six kills against four in favor for Fnatic thus far. But that curse really took quite a few structures out on the map. The map is starting to flow for both of our teams. Illidan is going to be in a great spot here to continue pushing in the top right. He's the only one showing, and Dignitas will take the time to set up for the Giants and maybe a gank on someone if they rotate poorly here. While at the same time, look at Fnatic. They're pushing the bottom. Quartnis has not made a choice yet on 13. He does not go into the Giant Killer yet. Is he actually thinking about going into cooldown reduction with this? Giant Killer against Muradin would be a perfect tool, and he wow. doesn't do it. He doesn't go for the Giant Killer. He doesn't feel he gets the auto attacks here. Flow Rider is taken instead. He's on 32 stacks on the Season Marksman, but he does not want the extra damage against Muradin, doubting his ability to stay on the target with the auto attacks. Fnatic open here to burst someone down and not have to worry about JPL on that Muradin. JPL will aim to prevent that from occurring, but Big Push in the middle looking scared. Scary as Fnatic is poised for defense. Now, with the tribute spawning relatively soon, we're going to need these lanes cleared out for Fnatic, and they're starting to do so. It seems Fnatic is a bit nervous. Yeah, that was a weird cocoon. That was... That was a big mistake in my opinion. You trade a cooldown against the Disintegrate, but you'd lose out on the trade. And one of the big things that Fnatic has going for them in these fights is isolation with Cocoon. But if you think you can just simply Cocoon a target when you right next to the target have a Lee Ming that is played by Mena of all people, then you done goofed. He's gonna burst it down yeah. and that is a cooldown lost. And we have to talk about it. The fort's all being done on the bottom, middle and top. That takes this composition that Fnatic has and makes it a little bit on the weaker side. You have nowhere to run to. You have no anchor to show up for. Isolation is going to be a little bit more difficult for them. And let's not forget that when we're talking about quest talents, when we're talking about season marksmen, we also talk, of course, about Vala. Her level 4 talent stacked to 60 extra damage so far. So Shrimpy hasn't completed it yet. And it feels that the pressure is now on Fnatic. They get the isolation, but the hunt is in. Emerald Wind coming out as well. They turn around and focus JPL, but he pops Avatar. He's ready to scuffle. Navala is down, a perfect line for Mena to use this integrate. A hook once again, Wolpi sacrifices himself for the team. Mena, you cannot give him resets. He is a monster, he's a beast, and he's taking kill after kill. Things also take more than a kill. They're moving in for the keep wall and they're burning it down. 16 to 15, they have a talent advantage and they already have a member looking towards the tribute on the right side. Dignitas feeling very confident. The fight over the curse really hurt Fnatic. Bakery back then secured it with a divine shield. And it's really tricky. Look at that momentum for Dignitas. They are pushing it in. They are trying to see if they can get some free damage onto the keep. The 16 talent helps them. But now that Vala is coming back and Stitches is on the way, they're retreating once more. Yes, they have to be cautious there. The Heroic's up soon here for Fnatic. They can get a pick underneath that keep. A Gorge could be lights out for Team Dignitas. So they pull out wisely here and wait for the next tribute. In terms of map control, they're in a great spot moving towards the upper levels here, moving towards 20 and such.
Dignita has built up a lot of this momentum back when uh, the fight over the curse happened. And I actually was doubting the choice of Dignitas to just sacrifice the Divine Shield for the curse because during all of this, they lost two heroes. And normally when you take a curse and you lose two heroes at the same time, it means that you get very little value. The chase for Muradin allowed Illidan to respawn, move into range, use the hunt to all of a sudden turn the entire fight against Fnatic. In hindsight, 2020 here, it would have been the better choice to just lead, let Muradin be, go back on the lanes, defend the lanes, and not take these fights. But as is, Dignitas build wow. up the momentum. The hook, on the other hand, immediately the move away. The gorge is good, though. Illidan goes in, and so does Muradin. Fight Mason out on the mighty gust. They're going to turn around for the fight. They're going to pull out the polymorph. Can they kill him off? They do. Greymane will fall. Greymane is down, but the rest of the team might be in trouble. Illidan already with the Divine Shield is trying to go for Martinix. Falstead is dead. Falstead down, and May is once again getting his reset moves in with the combo after another. Here comes the Stormwall as Illidan jumps in once again. They're trying to go for Breeze and the bot is down. Wubby. The Beetle is dead. Wubby does fall as well. Manny coming in. He's going to connect on the Q here, but not enough with the W. Swimpy trying to kite backwards and two members will live for Fnatic, but Dignitas reigns supreme in that team fight. We have Illidan going in deep after the Greyman kill together with the Muradin. If somehow falls that survives, then maybe they can make a play here, but that was not the case, and now the first keep is going to fall. Dignitas has brought the pain throughout this entire mid game. Keep down in the middle, catapults will spawn, and they continue moving forward, grabbing the mercenaries on the left. They sent Uther to the top right to grab the tribute. Bosses will be spawning relatively soon as well for these teams. It's going to come down to the wire. Yes, and especially with Dignitas heading into the 20, this is a massive problem for Fnatic. They need to try and see if they can force the team fight before. At this point, they're going down to the bot lane. They want to make a boss play. They're risking something here. They're saying, we need to do something. We cannot just wait and die. Muradin is on the way. But especially with the build that Vala has used here, they can raise the boss, and they do. They get it in time. And keep in mind, Dignitas has not taken their own boss up at the top. Exactly. Big play here for Fnatic grabbing that boss. Now they can now threaten a push here in the bot. They will have some mercenary pressure in the middle, but you don't have to worry about it. It will be cleaned up by the core itself. Fanatics putting it here on the line. They're rotating in, looking for a hook. It's all on Wubby. They're taking a risk at this point. They're saying, guys, we need to do something. The core is already under attack by the camp. They will maybe lose a few points there because of the catapults, but eventually it should be defended by itself. This is the boss play. They know they have one level until 20. Here comes the flag. There the goes hunt. the isolation. Quack able to get away. Schwimpy also is asshole out there. Immer Wim pops out. Zayla gets focused down. Oh. He's going to live, though. Schwimpy. Kiting backwards, dropping the reign of vengeance. JPL jumps in. Um, oh, false set is down. JPL reset with the kills. Reset city. Mana gets kill after kill after kill. Illidan doesn't die, and then it is Li Ming Zhou. Mana gets the triple with his team. Murden at the front with stun after stun. Greyman with the extra damage, and now we're having Dignitas moving for another curse. They don't care about the boss that kills the keep at the bot lane. They say, hey guys, we can win the game right here. They certainly can here. A Greymane and an Illidan on the core. The scariest thing you could think of here. The core starts to fall. Dignitas looking for another victory in this series. The hunt into the dive. Zillia going straight for the core. Mane showing off fireworks. The core continues to fall. Mana with a laser show as Dignitas takes the second game and takes the lead in the series with a 2-1. They win two games in a row and Fnatic is in trouble in this grand final at the mid-season brawl. Fnatic's pick composition not working out for them here. Dignitas having the perfect answer to the great rotations. And Mane on that lean mean just showing up for every single team fight. Fnatic was willing to play against Dignitas on those terms, on these conditions. They said, take your Illidan. We got our own strat and it is better than yours. We have the isolation, we're gonna get that. And there can be a lot of arguments made that this game would have looked a bit different if not for the first curse, if not for the way that Fnatic has played around it. But as is, we're seeing Fnatic lose two games in a row and Dignitas is very happy about the momentum that they just built. Can they continue it, though? That's the question. Remember, this is a best of seven here. They have to finish up the series with a total of four victories in order to take away the overall victory. Let's go to our analysts back at the desk to see what they think. 
That's right, momentum, an important word here. It might sound a little bit cliche, but when it comes to these two teams and how they play off one another, it's very, very important. Dignitas now takes the lead here in this best of seven series. And for both teams, this was an important game to establish how they're feeling about the rest of the series, Gilly. Yeah, especially with the composition that Fnatic brought in, mm -hmm. I would argue that even a little bit more so for Fnatic, that they were trying to once again execute that isolation comp. And yeah, they got some picks here and yes, there, yes. but even when they were getting picks, they were losing the team fight even afterward because you would ha you have to use so many resources in that type of composition to get the pick and afterward they would lose the 5v4. Yeah. And we talked about pressure and what that would mean in this series. Now mentally they are down in the series for the first time. Game number one you lose and you be like we're even. It's okay. But not only are you down in the series you have not been able to beat them in this series yet. So mentally right now Fnatic has to hold it together, or I feel like Dignitas could just win every game from here on out. Yeah, a lot of the fights there from Team Dignitas towards the end were strong. There was one hunt towards the very end that I was like, oh, that was a bit <laughs> suspect, but overall, fan, it worked out. Yeah, I mean, like everyone else has said, the composition was really focused on committing and isolating and killing one hero. But the problem was they had nothing else to kill the rest of the heroes. Last time they had Genji, an amazing yeah. hero in terms of just securing more and more kills. You give your Genji one reset, you can kind of clean up the rest of the fight, but it's a little bit different this time around. And I think their talent choices honestly made that even harder. I think the Muradin pick over the tail was a amazing and important yes pick for Team Dignitas here because of how tanky it was. And we have a replay of that last fight right here. So Fnatic is pushing with their boss. This is one of their last chances to win because they're down on everything. So if we can pause right here, this was a really good setup by Dignitas. They realized that Fnatic is death pushing here because they're down two levels, that they're down a tribute, and there's really, this is their last chance to win at this point. So you see three people of Dignitas, they're actually coming from the flanking side. They know that you're trying to hook Gorge one person, so all of them are just gonna flank and make a fight five versus five. So if we play on here, we see JPL pause again right here. So JPL jumps in and this is what he's been doing every single fight after level 13. The second he sees you hook someone, he jumps in. Mm. Otherwise, he's letting you hook him and then he's just turning on Avatar. Once he gets his 13 talent with the healing, he's actually just unkillable. Yeah. And when I say talent choices, I mean both of your assassins opted not to go Giant Killer and not to go Manticore. So at that point, you literally cannot kill the Muradin anymore once he reaches 13 and 16. And even if you get a kill on your initial target, you lose the fight eventually. And that's what we're seeing because the Muradin is just unkillable. He's just in your backline wrecking. So here we see the Gorge on the Illidan, the flank on Mene making this fight. And look at the Emerald Wind here. Look at the Illidan. I don't actually think... It didn't hit him. Yeah, I don't think yep. he got pushed back. The damage might have hit him, but it was timed in a way. So I don't think he got pushed back. And if he did, it wasn't very far at all, and he gets out. Although, honestly, even if he died here, look at this. This fight, Illidan didn't do anything in this fight until the very end. They just lost the fight anyways because you could not do anything to the Muradin or the rest of Team Dignitas. I have seen that Vala build, I think it was in Korea during HGC, mm. it, on Curse Hollow, designed as like a, a murking sort of build for Vala, and you did see that it, they were able to get the boss really fast because of that, and it helped them try to make that final play they needed to yeah. make. But yeah, even even when they did get the picks in the fight, which in that one they didn't, it's just afterward was the problem. And I, I was pleasantly surprised by the Muradin pick. I, I completely agree with Fan. I thought they would not have the ability to get kind of a counter initiation like I, I wanted to see from them, but mm. Zalia was just doing such a good job the entire game. JPL just didn't have to die. It was. It was really awesome. I'm, I was pleasantly surprised. Again. Yeah. I mean, we've seen a lot of Nubarak. We've seen a lot of stitches in the hand of JPL, but we've got to remember that that's where a lot of his original yeah. strength was in Muradin and being able to tank so well at the front. Well, thank you very much, guys. As we do go to a break now, but when we return, we currently have a situation where Team Dignitas in the Grand Final is 2-1 up against Fnatic. Join us after the break for more Grand Final action.